Good to see all of you. You've been longtime friends of Israel, your great supporters. It's very important for us to maintain bipartisan support at all times, but especially in these trying times. And I want to use this opportunity of our conversation to try to straighten out and also dispel some of the things that are being said about our bipartisan alliance and the importance of maintaining it, or the, uh, those who think that it's not important to maintain it. I don't know if you know this, but uh, I think it was about a week ago or two weeks ago, Iran officially uh, launched, along with Hezbollah, a campaign, which means goes to Hamas and the other H's, the Houthis and so on. But the formal policy is to shift from an ideological position of destroying Israel to a practical long-term plan to bring about the destruction of the state. We have to win. There is no substitute for victory. How do we achieve this victory? That, it doesn't nullify the other needs. How to take care of Hezbollah, how to take care of Iran, how to prevent Iran from uh, uh, acquiring nuclear weapons which would make this threat 100 times bigger. How to uh, prevent uh, these militias from firing into Israel rockets uh, from Yemen or from, uh, or from Baghdad. Precise rockets that could reach this room right now. How do we deal with that? These are big questions, but it starts with a necessary condition. And that condition is that those who launched this genocidal attack must be defeated. Uh, and how do you do that? What we've uh, set out at the outset with the support of President Biden and the administration, important support, which we appreciate deeply, was to say the first thing, our goal is to destroy the military and governing capabilities of Hamas in Gaza. Hamas has to be eliminated. Not as an idea. Nazism wasn't uh, destroyed as an idea in World War II, but Nazis do not govern Germany. There's still neo-Nazis around, but you destroyed that organization. The second thing was to get our hostages out, and their simultaneous goals, because the military action is what produces the, uh, uh, the pressure to release the hostages. We've released half. We intend to release all of them. And the third thing is to ensure that, indeed, that Gaza doesn't pose a threat to Israel again. These are the goals. The people of Israel are united behind these goals as never before. The army, I don't know if you met soldiers, you have to talk to them. The, the, the courage, the, the self-sacrifice, the, the unity is amazing. It's just amazing. We call them the TikTok generation. Some TikTok. I mean, these guys, I mean, I've met, I've met vet, I mean, I met wounded soldiers in the uh, orthopedic wards of Adasa and Shiva. You know, they're without legs, without arms. And so many told me, they all say, keep fighting, keep fighting. But so many said, I'm waiting for my prosthetic because I'm going back. The fourth thing is we also target the, the leaders. We've destroyed, we've killed the many senior leaders, including number four in Hamas, number three in Hamas. We'll get number two and number one. That's victory. Victory is within reach. It's a few weeks away. Now we are told, this is it, last point, now we are told, you can't do this. If you go into Rafah, you're going to have a humanitarian catastrophe. You're going to have, I don't know, 30,000 dead. 30,000. Civilian dead. Okay. That's not true. That is simply not true. Because we went into Rafah. You know, or the people won't have a place to go. Well, there's all of the Gaza Strip north of Rafah. You know, people down, they can move back up. They don't have to go into north of Wadi Gaza, but there's still 65% of the Gaza Strip left open. And people just move. They move with their tents. Uh, they have no place to go. Yes, they have a place to go. Second, you know, we provide them food. Uh, the problem was not the entry of trucks. The problem was the stealing of trucks, both by looting by Hamas and looting by others and so on. But we're getting that stuff. The problem water, we're fixing the water. We're committed to this, not because... The U.S. is prodding us, which it is, by the way, which is okay. I don't have a problem with that. But I'm prodding it. I'm pushing it. These gentlemen can tell you what we're doing, okay? 
So getting them out of Gaza and say, will they leave, uh, sorry, will they leave Rafa, the last bastion, you know, the last four battalions, the last four battalions, will they leave? We had a rescue operation to, uh, we found two hostages in a house right in the middle of Rafa. And we conducted a, a surgical operation. Minimal firepower. Killed the captors, got the people out, got them out. Okay? Just based on this little incident, 70,000 people in Gaza, you know, just moved. They moved because of nothing. It happened, what was it, half an hour, three quarters of an hour, some gunfire, they moved. They thought this was the great, uh, uh, you know, the grand invasion. They have a place to move, we'll make sure they have it, we make sure they have shelters, we make sure they have water, we make sure they have food, medicine, field hospitals, uh, and so on. So the, uh, this is almost a mass hysteria that has been built wrongly, wrongly, uh, that we cannot finish the job. We have to finish the job. It would be like leaving uh, part of the, uh, uh, of the Nazi army in place and saying, well, don't go there, you know, don't leave a quarter of the German army in place and don't go into Berlin. It's, it's not going to happen. But we have no choice because our very existence is on the line. We've had a remarkable alignment with, uh, without, not without uh, differences, not without discussions, but we've been able to overcome them uh, in, uh, since the beginning of the war with President Biden and his team. We have a difference on this. And I'm very open about it. I say, look, we have no choice. You know? and, and Joe Biden is open with me. He says, I don't want you to go in. I don't want you to take a major ground operation. I say, and, and you know, we've had these differences. Not going into Gaza in the first place, not in, in ground action. Uh, reluctance that we shouldn't go into uh, Gaza City or go into Shifa in the first place or go into Khan Yunus. And our armies re performed remarkably well. And with the... Uh, remarkable minimization of civilian casualties compared to any conflict in modern times. Right. We appreciate the support of the president, but Israeli prime ministers on different occasions, whether it was Ben-Gurion in 1948, challenging Truman, who, uh, not Truman, it was the time Marshall who controlled the policy, declared the state against the State Department opposition. Uh, or Levi Eshkol in 1967, uh, embarking on the Six-Day War, um, against the opposition of uh, the then President Johnson, who said, you'll be alone. So he said, okay, we'll be alone. Or in 1981, when Menachem Begin bombed the O.C. Rock uh, uh, reactor in uh, Iraq against President Reagan, who actually uh, stopped a uh, weapon ship. I know what it means when they're whispering in the staffer's ear. That's it. So, okay. you know, I hope we don't act alone. We will if we have to. But I don't think we are alone because I think we enjoy the support of the broad section of the American people across the political spectrum and I hope we enjoy your support, continued support.